Great. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Charles Hosale. I'm an archivist at the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress in the United States. Uh, my role in my role as an archivist at AFC, I participate in the Federal Agency's Digital Guidelines Initiative, or FADGI, which many of you are familiar with. Today, I'm going to discuss uh, FADGI's recently updated guidelines for embedding cue point metadata in WAVE files, uh, some practical applications for this new metadata, and some ideas for potential future work in the area. Uh, I'm a longtime listener, first time caller, and no time to wait, so thanks for having me. Uh, these updated guidelines reflect a collaborative effort. Rice Capades, uh, Dave Rice and Ashley Bluer, conducted interviews with audio stakeholders throughout our field in order to help identify the community's evolving needs, uh, which informed these updates. Another thanks to all of you who contributed. And an update to the guidelines also meant an update to BWF Meta Edit, which Jerome will show off shortly. Uh, FADGI's working models to first develop guidelines and then develop or help fund open source applications to support the guidelines. So you'll see we've done that here. The full change log for this version of the guidelines is included in the new version, but today I'm only discussing one major update, the guidelines for cue points. The guidelines document a process for marking portions of wave recordings as cue points and associating contextual metadata to the cues through values stored in the associated data list chunk, the label chunk, the note chunk, and the label text chunk. The guidelines are technical and time is short, but in summary, they recommend how to record different pieces of informative metadata in the associated data list sub chunks. So this information, Charles, can you, yeah. can you uh, unfold screen your presentation because it doesn't fit the, it, it, the oh yeah, yeah. goes over the boundary. Thanks. I did that before, but I don't know. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, it's working now? Yes, perfect, thanks. I think it has to do with what I'm clicked into. Anyways, um, so uh, the we're recording pieces of informative metadata in the associated data list subchunks. Uh, this information is then associated with the appropriate segment of the recording. Um, ideally, this data is later surfaced and engaged by users. Um, I'm glad to answer specific questions later about uh, the metadata and the guidelines, but I think it all makes more sense when you see it in action. Uh, so what are some practical applications of these new guidelines? There's, I think there's lots of potential uses. Uh, this is a sample example where I added a cue for the start of each song and a full performance and contextual note about the beginning of the recording and a note about the digitization quality. The audio is poor because the original is in poor condition. You can see the timestamps, the label, the note, and the purpose ID. The purpose ID indicates what kind of information the cue is expressing. Uh, FADGI's recommended five purposes, speaker, environment, note, transcription, and other. We're calling this CENTO. Uh, the CENTO controlled vocabulary was inspired by the CENT structure for IIIF annotation layers used in the Audio Annotate project, and CENT was developed by Kylie Warkington at the University of Texas, Austin. Uh, here's another example where I added transcript segments similar to a caption file or a oral history metadata synchronizer synced transcript. The transcript's now embedded in the wave. If you let your mind wander, you can see lots of potential practical applications for this functionality. Uh, here's a few that occurred to me. Uh, Marcos will share some later, and I'm sure others might be coming to your mind. I remember discussions at an old EMEA Hack Day event about standardizing how digitization notes are recorded and reported in order to more easily aid quality control. I think cue point data could be one avenue for realizing that. Um, those kinds of past dis discussions are what got what me thinking about potential applications for the guidelines. And I think uh, embedded metadata works great in other contexts, especially in photos. And I think it's something we ought to consider more for AV. Um, so if embedding useful data is a practice we want to grow, I suppose we'll need to pursue some ideas like I've listed here, um, like players that can display this data, scripts to help moving things around, uh, maybe terminology for digitization notes or uh, standards for embedding transcript data. And if we're doing this with WAV files, we probably want to do it more with video files and perhaps some link data. Um, all these are just ideas, of course. 
uh, describing recordings at the segment level is incredibly time consuming work. So there's going to be other considerations. Uh, but I think there's a lot of potential. And one example of some exploratory collaboration in this area is Audio Annotate. Um, they're developing a framework and infrastructure for displaying annotations to audio works. There's some completed annotations are online at that link. Um, and we're working with them to explore using exported embedded data from BWF MetaEdit as an import source to audio annotate to display this uh, embedded data uh, through their software. Um, thanks to all who worked on the guidelines, I was at best marginally involved in developing them and am standing on the shoulder of giants here. Uh, I'll pass it off to Jerome to show off BWF MetaEdit and Marcos will talk after that. Thanks for your time. Let us know if this sparks any ideas for collaboration. And I hope you consider embedding some contextual data in your ways. We'll do a quick tour about uh, BWF MetaEdit this one. So the main display of BWF MetaEdit is this one. There are different displays. So one with different, a big block for one file, and we can have uh, some warnings and so on. Here we have some warnings about uh, FADGI recommendation because we activated in the option uh, the possibility to have uh, rules. So we are, we we use the FADGI rec uh, recommendation as a rule. So if there is an issue be between the file and the FADGI recommendation, there is a small warning saying, for example, here, the description must not be empty. It is a FADGI recommendation. Or we can have so have here a word, some different warning here, for example, uh, BWF is a bit old and they don't accept a lot of accents, for example, so it is mostly uh, US American. So here there is an accent. So there is a warning about saying, oh, there, is, there may be some interoperability issues there because uh, BWF uh, is not uh, intended for accent. Uh, we have also different uh, different views, so we can have some rows, so it is more uh, easy to have several files. And also the warning are all, uh, at the same time uh, also there. About the queues, so now the new uh, edi editor in the better UF meta edit uh, in the last version is the queue editor, so if I edit. So we can edit uh, the different lines of the queues, we can add or remove and so on the, the lines. We can, uh, so we can choose for the start uh, in a, with a time code or timestamp or in samples. We can select, we have uh, some help about okay, which one, which code to use, uh, which country, and so on. For example, we can use uh, a different country, the different uh, language, and also the, um, the dialects. So for German, it can be a Swiss German or a German from Germany. So we, we use all uh, inside the standards or inside the FADGI recommendation, for example, the purpose ID, who had, uh, we talk about that uh, sooner. So all is possible with the GUI, and also we, you can add that with a command line if you want some automation. Uh, we have uh, some interoperability issues with some uh, different tools. So there are, there are the specs and there's uh, the reality. And in the reality, we have two different ways to, um, to implement the queues format. And we have an option for going from one format to another format, depending on what, uh, which interoperability you want. So unfortunately, they are not compatible, but we, we permit to, to switch from one format to another format. I will let the, uh, I will stop the tour and let's I let uh, some others. Uh, Marcos, can you keep the presentation, keep going with the presentation? Yep. All right. All right, can anyone see the screen? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna talk um, a little bit about how we um, uh, use embedded uh, metadata at the NYPR archives. My name is Marco Suedo. I'm um, 
archive manager at New York Public Radio, which includes the stations WNYC and WQXR, as well as others. Um, WNYC's uh, public radio station in New York City, I believe it's we're the largest in the country. And we're about to be 100 years old, but the archives didn't start till about uh, 20 years ago. So I'm going to race through these slides, talk about uh, three uses of embedded metadata, which we started doing about eight years ago. Uh, one is as a conduit among systems. Uh, one is as a means of segmenting, which has been mentioned. And then finally, to store technical documentation. Let's start with a conduit. So uh, like many organizations, we have several uh, systems that kind of haven't traditionally talked to each other. And um, one uses PP Core, one is the David system that has been mentioned, one is called News Boss, and then there's the, the website that we use to publish our things. And uh, a few years ago, we decided to kind of distill information from these systems and kind of harmonize all this information into a basic uh, RIF info um, uh, standard that then we can embed in the metadata and use that um, to talk among systems. So this is basically the process. We gather information from all these systems, we distill it, uh, to essentially what is very similar to Dublin core uh, schema. And then from there, we redistribute it to uh, various other places. Um, and this has had some uh, nice um, consequences. So because we embed this metadata, we can uh, now see information, of course, in things like Windows. So that's, that's very useful. We don't need to send a sidecar uh, file. Um, you know, we're a very active archive, so our files are being sent all over the place and being put in uh, Pro Tools sessions. And um, it's good to have some information about the file embedded right there. Um, and then the, the other nice thing is that many systems accept and read metadata easily. And uh, sometimes you're pleasantly, su pleasantly surprised that the metadata that you uh, embedded in some system somehow has traveled um, down the, down the uh, workflow. And here's an example of MP3s that were downloaded from our website that uh, retain not all, but some of the metadata that we had included in, um, in, the, uh, in the WAV file. Next use is as a means as means of segmenting, which has been mentioned before. And um, and here's an example. This is from a show uh, called On the Media, which we produce, and we've been uh, digitizing uh, dats and cassettes uh, from back in the 80s and 90s. And you'll notice that uh, the second mark here, which we have traditionally done with Adobe Edition, says NPR News. So that segment basically wouldn't be. Um, in our purview, it's it's not it doesn't belong to us copyright wise, so it'd be important uh, to segment this out if we ever want to publish. And there's probably ways to automate this. And um, what if we ever wanted to publish this? This would be a good uh, way to say, okay, whatever it says NPR news, take that segment out and uh, publish that. Probably with an FFM or some kind of script. And again, these kind of markers uh, are seen by other systems sometimes with different levels of compatibility. Here in this case, um, they only show us markers, but there's no information about them. But because it's embedded, uh, we feel okay um, that it's not lost necessarily. Um, because we do our embedding, uh, sorry, our marking in Adobe Edition, the Adobe Edition markers was traditionally or still done uh, with XMP and the structure is kind of complicated. We did develop a script to kind of uh, pull these out, but uh, we're so happy to have this now uh, in the Q editor in the NBWF metadata. It's much easier to uh, read and to transform. And here's an example of, of how we've done it uh, traditionally in the description of our PV core uh, database. Finally, the third uh, use is to store technical documentation. Um, here's an example of uh, the kind of coding history uh, information that we're getting from our vendor. So uh, we use, of course, the FAGI guidelines and the EDU uh, before that. And we've actually gone a little farther and actually um, put things like uh, EQ and noise reduction and calibrations and speed and all that stuff, which we then parse out uh, again to uh, annotations in uh, uh, PV core. 
And also uh, we've partnered with our vendor uh, where we, he has managed to, for example, when we do that, to capture the error flag from the deck and uh, mark that in the, um, and, and put that as a marker in the way file and then include a note that says, um, there's been an error of some sort here. So that's a bit of a combination of uh, marking and technical metadata. And that's it for me. Uh, I'm gonna leave a slide with the information for all of us and the guidelines and BWF MetaEdit. Thank you for listening. Wonderful, thank you so much, everyone. You'll have to uh, think think of the clapping hands of a, of a full room because right now we have 80, 84 people uh, listening in. So that's a, that's a bunch of people you've just inspired. Um, we have some extra time because it does seem like our fourth speaker of the session, unfortunately, is AWOL at the moment. We're still hoping they, they show up, uh, but we can't, uh, we can't say for sure. Uh, good to see all the claps in the chat. And um, yes, actually, Kate did answer all the questions in the chat, but I think for the people who can't multitask like y'all are doing, um, I, think, I think we can sort of, we have some time, Marion, if you're, if you're okay with that. To take some extra time to to go over this conversation i think there were two main topics of conversation which is a how do these q comments relate to transcriptions and other means of like accessibility and maybe charles or marcus you want to talk to that a little bit and i saw another um, a conversation going back and forth uh, about how how this relates to certain ebu standards so maybe jerome that's jerome that's one for you to pick up or otherwise we can give kate the mic if if she would be willing to do that so charles can you could you pick up on the first one for a bit Sure. Uh, so obviously there's way better accessibility standards, but um, because the option was there, I wanted to try dropping the whole transcript in to the file to see where the sort of stress points were as a proof of concept. And having done subtitling before, I can see where we would need some standards or some improvements or it, it's not an ideal use, but uh, I was intrigued by the idea of having the transcript follow the file around uh, permanently. So gave it a shot. Um, I think there's more to discuss there. Um, I think that uh, transcripts embedded in video files or subtitles embedded in video files work very well. And um, yeah, I think there's more to talk about. Marcus, do you want to add something to that? No, not really. I mean, uh, but I think uh, Charles' point is well taken. I mean, essentially what you want is is a time, a speaker, and a, a text, a chunk of text. So if you have that, you can you know transform it into probably uh, any standard you would wish. Yeah, exactly. By the way, big fan of the On The Media show. So happy that's, to hear that's in good hands. Um, oh, great. Jerome, do you we, just, we just need to thank the entire <laughs> run, so that was good. Um, there is a question from Richard about uh, the support of the original BWF Q sheet in the quality chunk. Uh, maybe I am too young, uh, but I don't know this one. Uh, so we don't support it, I think. Uh, we on, only support uh, the Q chunk standard. Uh, it could be converted or we could expand BWF MetaEdit for supporting this quality chunk uh, if there is a need, but for the moment it is not possible. So uh, the choice was the, the Q chunk itself by uh, the Library of Congress who sponsored uh, the development. And yeah, if there is a new need about another chunk, we can add something in BWF MetaEdit. Uh, as usual, the open source uh, stuff is free to use, but the development has a cost and uh, the, the, de the development depends uh, on the sponsors. Yeah, so for the moment, the focus was on only on the Q chunk, the, the new style. So in that case, even if we speak about a very old format, actually. Maybe maybe to pick up on the on the on the, the matter of sponsorship because you mentioned and this is a library of Cong uh, congress. This is a library of congress uh, choice. Yes. Yeah, and I was uh, curious. Uh, on, yeah, on my side, uh, media area, we are we do technical support. So the political choice, it is uh, the the choice of 
uh, sponsor or archivist. So we, we provide the, 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 the technology, the technical uh, skills, but we don't uh, do the choice ourselves. So it is we, we work as a group and the, there are different people involved in that. And in that case, it is a choice from Library of Congress we discuss. I don't know how, how Kate can maybe uh, talk a bit more about that. And uh, on that, uh, we provide the support that's all. Okay, and uh, Marcos, do you maybe have a, um, I, I was curious whether, uh, how the implementation, we have, a, we have a guest in the, in the, in the, in the booth here, um, <laughs> whether uh, you talked about implementing the queue chunks into your vendors operation, and I was curious whether that was a, a difficult process. Uh, well, he, he mostly did it. So uh, this was George Blood. And this is something that actually I had heard years ago at a YASA conference where you, someone, uh, or ask, it may have been ask, someone was capturing, there's a, there's a little error flag that comes on uh, on that DEX or when you're transferring that indicates that error correction or the transport is having difficulties. So, uh, oh, there we go. We should transcribe that. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so the idea is that you have the the file. I just transcribed it, and then you get uh, literally the signal from the from the deck, and that's recorded as an audio track, basically as a spike, as a voltage. And then uh, they have a script that transforms that that synchronized audio file and um, inserts it as a marker saying, okay, there's been an error here. We don't know what it is, but um, that's how it works. So we're very excited about that because it kind of, uh, you know, gives us, even if you can't hear it, you know, the deck was struggling at that point. Yep. Wonderful. I think that wraps it up. Jerome, at least I'm happy that you had a, a difficult, different experience with this crowd than, than your previous one. You said you didn't expect any questions. I, I, I think we sort of, Fix it apart. There is a lot and then, of questions. <laughs> and, and then some. Uh, so for those interested, I, I suggest the break to sort of look at the next steps, some more uh, queue chunking and transcripts and accessibility mm -hmm. standards. And